We're just delighted to uh, welcome uh, another one of the fine researchers from the UNM Cancer Center joining us here at the table. Uh, here today is Dr. Vittorio, uh, Vittorio Cristini. And uh, Dr. Cristini is a researcher at the UNM Cancer Center. He is uh, University of New Mexico professor of pathology. And welcome. Thank Can I you. call you Vittorio? Sure. Okay, great. <laughs> welcome to the show. We've had a chance to visit a little bit prior to, and uh, you're a very interesting guy. How, how long have you been with the UNM Cancer Center? Uh, almost three years. No. And you're not from Albuquerque, are you? No. <laughs> I'm from Rome, Italy. Wow. Yeah. Wonderful. And uh, give us a little bit about your background. What? Well, so my uh, first degree in Italy is in nuclear engineering, actually. Um, and then I moved to the U.S. I went to Yale, did a Ph.D. there in chemical engineering. Mm. That was a long time ago, actually. Um, I graduated from Yale in the beginning of 2000, and then I moved to the University of Minnesota in Minneapolis, and I was a visiting assistant professor in chemical engineering and in mathematics, and uh, that's when uh, I started being interested in modeling uh, cancer. Mm. My originally, my background is in traditional engineering fields, modeling uh, complex fluids, complex materials, alloys or uh, uh, flow emulsions, things that actually apply to makeup, for example. And, uh, and but I realized that uh, um, cancer is complex tissue that actually obeys the same physics as those uh, uh, materials, complex materials studied by engineers. And so I thought maybe we can use the same uh, approaches to understand uh, how cancers grow, how they develop their morphology, their shape, and um, how they interact with the tissue that surrounds them, and how they respond to treatment. Then I moved to uh, Irvine in, in Orange County. Mm -hmm. I became an assistant professor of um, biomedical engineering there. And, uh, and then I moved again. I moved to the Texas Medical Center, to the U, um, University of Texas uh, MD Anderson Cancer Center. Mm -hmm. And uh, really my, my research uh, really was taken to a whole new level there. I'm very grateful to that uh, experience and the collaborators in the, among doctors and the clinicians and the cancer biologists that I um, met there and that I keep working with also here. And uh, I'm also very happy being in the UNM, uh, UNM Cancer Center and Department of Pathology. Yeah. Uh, was that a really difficult change then going from nuclear engineering to cancer? Uh, well, I had to, I had kind of a steep learning curve, as yeah. they say. I had to understand all the biological uh, concepts, but uh, really the, um, the physics, which is what I'm interested in, is not very different. So tumors are physical systems, you know, they, they obey fundamental laws of physics. It's, it's an interesting parallel. You never look at biological material as having an engineering type structure, but that's exactly what you do. That's now, I'm, I'm reading about how you do this work and, and you take um, scientific measurements and tissue analysis and then break it down into an engineering structure and a mathematical equation mm -hmm. to help treat whatever tumor or, or cancer is growing in, in, in somebody. Uh, how do, and it's a non-invasive type of um, way that you do that. So you take the, the tumor, you look at the structure of it, and then analyze how best to treat it. Is that, is that kind of what you do? Yeah, basically we uh, use the exact same data that are currently being gathered for patient, from patients in mm -hmm. hospitals. So yeah. data from contrast CT scans, data from uh, histopathology. And um, from each patient, we, uh, we take this data and we extract parameters that are specific to the patient that uh, really characterize the physics 
that goes on in the tumor of that specific patient. And mm -hmm. when I say physics, I really mean here how easily or not easily chemotherapy drugs are transported through the tissue of the cancer of that specific patient. And that depends on the qualities of the tumor vasculature and other properties of the tissue. And they change from patient to patient. Yeah. And so we take this information, we input this information in the mathematical formula, and the mathematical formula makes a prediction of how much of the tumor in that patient current chemotherapy can kill. Mm. And so then uh, in this uh, work, we compare this prediction to the actual direct uh, assessment from histology after the tumors were treated and resected. And we show that we have, uh, in average, an error of about 15%, 1.5, which is very, very good. Yeah. Uh, yes. Now, is this mathematical formula specific to certain cancers, or can it be applied to any cancer? That's a really good question. So, so far we have tested it in three different types of tumors, uh, brain tumors, primary brain tumors, metastatic tumors in the liver, and lymphoma tumors. Mm. And what we have learned is that basically the formula works in all cases, except that the parameter values are different, as you can expect, because those tissues are different. A lymphoma is different from uh, the tissue of the brain. Mm -hmm. But the, the, the formula is the same, and that makes sense to me because the formula reflects the fundamental first principles of physics that everything obeys to. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. Now it's quite complex. You, <laughs> your uh, work is allowing physicians to more accurately prescribe drugs to treat the specific tumors then? Well, now it's a, a more of proof of concept, right? Yes. So this has been used retrospectively on, uh, on patient data. Uh, and the idea is that when you do more studies and you show that it, uh, that it indeed is reliable, then you can start using it prospectively, that is on new patients. And uh, actually what I'm very interested in is not just uh, being able to tell a person chemo will work 20% uh, on you or chemo will work 70% on you, but uh, on how you use this information to maybe change the treatment for each person based on uh, the person's unique uh, uh, tissue. So they're actually receiving more personalized treatment. For example, yes. Yeah. I don't like the word, but yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now you've published this work, and has it been adopted by any other uh, cancer um, treatment centers around the country? So th this just came out, uh -huh. and uh, uh, but it is uh, being used at MD Anderson uh, as uh, for um, understanding how patients respond to treatments. And uh, we will start using it in pancreatic cancer, for example. Yes, which is a very and fast growing yes. cancer. Uh, have you been invited to speak on this uh, around the country? Yeah, I, 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 I am invited. Uh, yeah. Uh, all the Good. Time. Yeah. And, you know, just kind of more of a general question when people do have cancer and they're dealing with this huge issue, what should their first? Um, what should their, they first consider when seeking a doctor? Well, that's uh, really not the question you want to ask an engineer. But, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I think, uh, um, for example, here at UNM, the cancer center has, a, has an excellent reputation in treatment. I think you want to go with an NIH uh, designated uh, or comprehensive cancer center. Mm -hmm. And uh, unfortunately, it varies a lot, uh, as far as I understand, from disease to disease, from cancer to cancer. Yes. And uh, unfortunately, clearly, the standard of care is not uh, homogeneous around the country, not even close to that. Well, Vittorio, you're a very impressive guy, and I would say you're a world-class uh, researcher on this Thank and, you. and I know you have a lot of uh, colleagues at uh, UNM that uh, I'm sure you admire and uh, admire their work as well. We have quite a quite a, a collection of talent over there at the UNM Cancer yeah. Center and I'm, I'm really pleased to meet you.